Celtic Fairy Tales by Joseph Jacobs. Chapter 3 The Field of Boleons One fine day in harvest. It was indeed Lady Day in harvest that everybody knows to be one of the greatest holidays in the year. Tom Fitzpatrick was taking a ramble through the ground and went along the sunny side of a hedge, when all of a sudden he heard a clacking sort of noise a little before him in the hedge. "'Dear me,' said Tom, "'but isn't it surprising to hear the stone chatterers singing so late in the season?' So Tom stole on, going on the tops of his toes, to try if he could get a sight of what was making the noise, to see if he was right in his guess. The noise stopped, but as Tom looked sharply through the bushes, what should he see in a nook of the hedge but a brown pitcher that might hold about a gallon and a half of liquor, and by and by a little wee teeny tiny bit of an old man, with a little motty of a cocked hat stuck upon the top of his head, a dishy doshy leather apron hanging before him, pulled out a little wooden stool, and stood up upon it, and dipped a little piggin into the pitcher, and took out the full of it, and put it beside the stool, and then sat down under the pitcher, and began to work at putting a heel-piece on a bit of a brogue just fit for himself. Well, by the powers, said Tom to himself, I often heard tell of the leprechauns, and to tell God's truth, I never rightly believed in them, but here's one of them in real earnest. If I go knowingly to work, I'm a made man. They say a body must never take their eyes off them, or they'll escape. Tom now stole on a little further, with his eye fixed on the little man, just as a cat does with a mouse. When he got up quite close to him, God bless your work, neighbor, said Tom. The little man raised up his head and said, Thank you kindly, said he. I wonder you'd be working on the holiday, said Tom. That's my own business, not yours, was the reply. Well, maybe you'd be civil enough to tell us what you've got in the pitcher there, said Tom. That I will with pleasure, said he. It's good beer. Beer, said Tom. Thunder and fire. Where did you get it? Where did I get it, is it? Why, I made it. And what do you think I made it of? Devil a one of me knows, says Tom. But of malt, I suppose. What else? There you're out. I made it of heath. Of heath, said Tom, bursting out laughing. Sure you don't think me to be such a fool as to believe that. Do as you please, said he. But what I tell you is the truth. Did you never hear tell of the Danes? Well, what about them, said Tom? Why, all the about them there is, is that when they were here, they taught us to make beer out of the heath, and the secret's in my family ever since. Will you give a body a taste of your beer, said Tom? I'll tell you what it is, young man. It would be fitter for you to be looking after your father's property than to be bothering decent, quiet people with your foolish questions. There now, while you're idling away your time here, there's the cows have broke into the oats and are knocking the corn all about. Tom was taken so by surprise with this that he was just on the very point of turning round when he recollected himself, so afraid that the like might happen again, he made a grab at the leprechaun and caught him up in his hand. But in his hurry he overset the pitcher and spilt all the beer so that he could not get a taste of it to tell what sort it was. He then swore that he would kill him if he didn't show him where his money was. Tom looked so wicked and so bloody-minded that the little man was quite frightened. So, says he, come along with me a couple of fields off and I'll show you a crock of gold. So they went, and Tom held the leprechaun fast in his hand and never took his eyes from off him, though they had to cross hedges and ditches and a crooked bit of bog, till at last they came to a great field all full of bullions. And the leprechaun pointed to a big bullion, and says he, Dig under that bullion, and you'll get the great crock all full of guineas. Tom, in his hurry, had never thought of bringing a spade with him, so he made up his mind to run home and fetch one, and that he might know the place again, he took off one of his red garters and tied it round the bullion. Then he said to the leprechaun, Swear you'll not take that garter away from that bullion. And the leprechaun swore right away not to touch it. I suppose, said the leprechaun very civilly, that you have no further occasion for me. No, says Tom. You may go away now, if you please, and God speed you, and may good luck attend you wherever you go. Well, goodbye to you, Tom Fitzpatrick, said the leprechaun. And much good may it do you when you get it. So Tom ran for dear life till he came home and got a spade, and then away with him as hard as he could go, back to the field of bullions. But when he got there, lo and behold, not a bullion in the field, but had a red garter, the very model of his own, tied about it. And as to digging up the whole field, that was all nonsense, for there were more than forty good Irish acres in it. So Tom came home again with his spade on his shoulder, a little cooler than he went, and many's the hearty curse he gave the leprechaun every time he thought of the neat turn he had served him. End of chapter 3 Recording by Pete Lutz, Corpus Christi, Texas
My website is 63audio.f6.3studio.com.